Hello and welcome to Stupid Ancient History with Midgley and Taylor and our expert, non-expert, special guest. We're not really a special guest anymore. Well, no, I said I said a while ago. Just another person. Yeah, uh, large, <laughs> large high commander of the science cupboard, first of his name and knower of nothing. I like we saying he's Manchester now. Now, hello. <laughs> As always, we've eaten far too many sweets, we're wearing togas, and today we're going to look at the conflict and the war between Rome and the Sabines. Previously on Stupid Ancient History, we've been looking at the very earliest history of Rome under Romulus. From its fantastical founding after he and his brother were saved by a she-wolf. Or a prostitute. I'm not letting that go. <laughs> <laughs> and how once he'd set up his new city, after a small matter of killing his twin, Remus, Romulus pretty much established all aspects of Roman rule, religious and culture. Almost as if writers like Livy were looking at aspects of their own lives and just saying, um, yeah, Romul Romulus did that. Yeah. Uh, and then how Romulus's, shall we say, unconventional approach to ensuring future generations of Rome led to conflict with the surrounding tribes. What? You mean... Conning, conning them with a fake festival, yep. nicking their daughters, yep. and then battering anyone who dared to complain. Yep. It's not very noble, that really. It's I'm not, sorry. No. no. But it did work. It did work. Clever, maybe. Noble. No. Yeah. So the events of this little video are directly tied to the previous one. Um, and as we've just pointed out, the Romans had defeated all of the surrounding tribes who attacked them pretty much straight away. But not the Sabines. No. The, the, were they, how did they react to this? Like, the others didn't just take their daughters being kidnapped, you know, lying down. They didn't work out when they, like, retaliated, but they, they did something. Did the Sabines have a crack? Well... Yeah, they did. They, yeah. Yeah. So the Sabines, the... They were more cunning, a bit more well thought out than that. They didn't just pile straight in going, Oh, they've nicked our women, let's have them. Um, like, so, the, and the, the, like the crusty people. Like the crustavini. The crusty people. Yeah, I mean, especially watching how easily the Romans defeated the other tribes who seemed to attack without a plan. The Sabines, a bit clever than that. Yeah, so Tatius, who is the Sabine king, made sure that the Sabines showed no sign of anger or hostility directly to the Romans while they came up with his plan. So they played nice. They played it cool. Biding their time, basically. Yeah. Okay. So this was going to be a much more significant fight than the others, as the Sabines, not only had they had more daughters stolen, <laughs> bigger axe to grind, <laughs> um, but they were the bigger of the four tribes that were invited to the festival. Um, and also, they've also seen how the Romans fight. So they're, they're the cool kind of biding the time ones, wait and see what happens, letting the other guys go in first and have terrible things happen yeah. to them. While they sit back, Yeah, and lose while they sit back and work out what it is they're going to do. But they're not letting the Romans off. They're not yeah. just like, oh, we've got some more daughters over there. We'll, uh, we'll, we'll breed more, it's fine. Yeah, no, they're, they're biding their time and they're coming up with a plan. Uh, so what did they do to get like, back at the Romans? Just... They just build like a giant wooden woman and all hide inside her. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not quite the Trojan horse. Oh, that would have been much cooler. That would have been a amazing. Giant oh, no! Someone missed that one! Don't we get her? Don't we get her? How did we miss the giant wooden woman? <laughs> no, they, they... You should just go back and tell them that. So the, the Sabines, though, did decide against a full-on attack against Rome's walls. Because, like I said, that hasn't gone well previously. And obviously no one had been smart enough to think of a giant wooden woman. Well, no. I'm assuming these walls are now more significant than the ones Remus just hopped over. Yeah, yeah. But instead, the Sabines found a weakness. And Livy tells us exactly what it is. So, Spurius Tarpius was in charge of the Roman citadel. By chance, Tarpius's virgin daughter went outside the wall to get water for the religious rituals and Tatius bribed her with gold so that she would let armed soldiers into the citadel. Okay. Uh, did they, so they just bribed her? Yeah. Classic. But the, there's a bit more to do with this bribe. It's not like they just rocked up with a ton of cash. Yeah, because 
So, so they just have someone waiting by the river in case this virgin daughter came <laughs> well, working out. Well, Livy goes on. After they got in, they killed her by crushing her with her weapons. Not very nice. Either so that it looked like they forced their way into the citadel, or to set an example for the future, so that no one would keep a promise to a traitor. There is another story that the Sabine people wore heavy gold bracelets on their left arms, and lovely rings with jewels, so she asked them for the things they had on their left arms, but they heaped upon her their shields instead of the gold gifts that she meant. Right, okay. So I they mean, squashed her. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the, the, this obviously raises a few questions. I mean, why crush her with the weapons? Yeah. Shall it be much quicker and sneakier just to... to stab her. Yeah, I mean, and again, gold shields and gold bracelets and rings, I mean, it's like Mr. T going into battle. The more Yeah, you know, from a... From a Go back to my science. Um, <laughs> from a metallurgy point of view, gold's very soft. It would make a terrible weapon. It would. That's what I've looked like, though, going into battle. Just blend up. <laughs> oh, you'd be colour coordinated. I would, yeah. definitely, yes. Yeah, but no, knowing you, you'd be like, Helen, Helen, where's your sword? <laughs> what? I've got, I didn't go with my bracelets or my rings. I'm not using that. It's rubbish. But yeah, I mean, it, it's not exactly sneaky, is it? You're sneaking into the Roman city. Yeah. Oh, it's just crushing with all these shields yeah. we've got, mate. So yeah, th there are issues with the validity of this story. But Death to traitors and all. But they got into the citadel. They get into the citadel without anyone noticing. So anyway, having dispatched the traitor... Basically, squished Crushed her. Crushed yeah. With gold. <laughs> the Sabines began to occupy the citadel of Rome. Where is that? So, it seems the modern location is Capitoline Hill at one end of the Roman Forum, with the Palatine Hill on the other side, and these pictures as well that yep. we're going to put up, and it's where the majority of the Romans will be sleeping. Is that you in the foreground pointing? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> So, um, the following morning, realising what happened, the Romans lined up on this flat land between the two hills, what is the Forum, mm. um, at the time it was just a field, and they challenged the Sabines, literally, come on then, let's have it. The Sabines kept their cool, they're not doing anything until they're ready, and they waited in their positions until the Romans had worked themselves up into a frenzy. So they weren't thinking straight, they were just too angry. Yeah. Um, when they did finally get to the Romans and start fighting, it didn't go too well for the Romans, no. as Livy says. So the leaders started fighting. The Sabine, Metius Curtius, and the Roman, Hostius, Hostilius. Hostilius, near the front ranks on an even ground, kept the Romans going with his courage and spirit. But when he died, the army gave way straight away and scattered towards the old Palatine Gate. Right, okay, so the leader died and they all just started legging it. Yeah, they were like, oh, no, 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 if he's gone, not up in that. Uh, so it's not going very well for the people of the, the chosen people of the greatest city that ever will be, or whatever they call themselves. Yeah, no, not, really. not really. Despite the fact that supposedly Romulus is the son of the god of war, mm. which makes it even more Yeah, ridiculous. a bit embarrassing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, so, but you know, when in doubt, Romulus turns to the most reliable tactic from the ancient world. He has a good old prey. <laughs> <laughs> and Livy tells us exactly what he says. Even Romulus was carried along with the crowd running away. Lifting his weapons to the sky, he said, Jupiter, your birds told me to build the first foundations of the city here on the Palatine. Now the Sabines have the citadel brought by their wickedness. The armed men have captured the central valley and are heading here from there. But you, the father of gods and men, take the enemy away from the citadel here at least. Stop the Romans' terror and their shameful running away. I promise that I will build a temple here for you, Jupiter the Stayer, which will be a reminder for all time that you helped save the city. Right, so he's just begging for help. Yeah, at this I mean, point. Yeah. you should also point out it's not a short prayer, is it? It's no, no, no. Like, Dear Jupiter, please help. Ah, ah, ah. Yeah. You know, he's meant to be running at this point, so hang on, lads, just go have a just, bit just of a quick bit, pray. Bit, quick pray. Yeah. Uh, did it work? Well, back to Livy. When he had prayed, and as if he sensed that his prayers had been heard, he said, Here, Romans, Jupiter, the best and greatest orders. Us to, us to stop running and start fighting. 
Could he not just lied without having to yeah. <laughs> Without just having that big long prey. Yeah, just like, like all right, lads, I've, I've had a bit of a word with Jupiter. We're good. Turn around. Yeah. Would, you, he, would he not pray to his dad? Well, yeah, that would help. Or maybe he had a list and starts with yeah. one. And, you know. But maybe, I mean, while, it seemed, while he was doing this, though, the Sabines had pushed their advantage. He's having a prey. They're pushing forward their attack. Um, and they were now at the Palatine Gate, which is at the foot of the Palatine Hill, so it's looking pretty bad. Mm. Um, so confident were they, though, that Metius, the man leading the Sabine attack, called out, We have conquered our treacherous hosts and our powerless enemies. Now they know that snatching young girls is very different from fighting against men. Oh, <laughs> yeah. they're fighting words. They are fighting words. And, you know, almost as soon as he's made that kind of lighted remark against the Romans thinking oh, we're at it we've done it he, as soon as he said that uh, Romulus and a group of his men jump him and stab him right okay so yeah be careful what you say on the battlefield because well I mean to be fair if Romulus had time to stop and have this big long prayer, <laughs> big long prayer. I would have thought I'd have time for a witty retort, <laughs> witty retort. But, <laughs> but no they just stabbed him So it's, it's not going well for anyone anymore, is it? No. Not really. No, both sides kind of resume their fight on the flat ground, flat ground even, <laughs> between the Capitoline and Palatine Hills, which is basically the Roman Forum. Yeah. Um, and the fighting is pretty fierce, isn't it? Can't yeah. slip anyway. But it's at exactly that moment that the battle takes a very unusual turn. This is going to be ridiculous. <laughs> so. It's going to be perfectly fine. <laughs> and Livy says... Then the abducted Sabine women, who the war was about, threw themselves between the flying spears, with their hair flying and their clothes ripped. Why are their clothes ripped? Oh, well, I want to know. They're, just, they're in the middle of a battlefield. All, all these spears and swords <laughs> about. Yeah. They were brave because their upset took away female fear. Sexist. They ran across <laughs> the battlefield and separated the clashing armies, stopping their conflicts. Okay. It's a bit like when we have to break up a fight between two year ten. It is, but who <laughs> who was that for the benefit of? Both armies? Are they, are they now on board with the Roman men? Well, it, it would seem so. I mean, yeah, it, it's it's a bold move, definitely. I mean, also, how do you fit in between between two fighting armies on a battlefield? It's like whoa, 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 you, whoa. You're gonna have to like squeeze yourself in there, aren't you? You do, but I, I'd like to say if you've spent up a fight in school, just the typical. Blocker, one arm stretched out. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's why the clothes are all ripped. Yeah. And the hair's all messy. Or maybe, it. maybe that was tactical, and they thought if we're wearing ripped clothes and our bits are on show, that will make them stop fighting. Maybe. Bear in mind that one side of these are. Is your dad's and dad. brothers, and. I mean, well, that may fly in East Manchester, but. <laughs> no, but it would probably stop them fighting. It, it, it'd it'd make you too. Like, ah! yeah. Sis. Put your clothes <laughs> on. I know what my brother would do if he saw that and he wouldn't, he wouldn't, he wouldn't be happy. Yeah, let, let's swiftly move on. <laughs> so yeah, no, I mean, it's a good point. The, the, these women now point out to the fighting Romans and the Sabines that it's, these women link the two tribes. Mm. The Romans are their husbands, so presumably they've bought on to the Roman project. Do we know how long it's been since the, 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 the rape, the kidnapping? Well, if there's... There's references to their children as well, so ah, at so least nine months, right, okay. if not more. So they say, look, the Romans are our husbands, the Sabines, you are our parents and our families, you are in-laws, it's not someone's wedding, stop your scrapping. <laughs> um, and Livy even tells us of a nice little speech they give in the middle of a battle. The, wo the women? Yeah. Collectively as Absolutely. one? Absolutely, or... all as one. We rehearsed it beforehand. If you don't like the ties between you, if you don't like our marriages, then take your anger out on us, stupid. <laughs> we are the cause of this war. I mean, they're not. <laughs> this is clearly written by a bloke, isn't we it? Are, we are the cause of fathers and husbands lying wounded and dead. Again, no, it's not. It is better for us to die. Hell no. <laughs> Since by losing one of you, we'll be widows or orphans. I say, good. So let them kill each other. <laughs> they're off without them. Really, again, we've got some cracking blame shifting. We have on, just. We? Oh, I know this. You're fighting over us. This is all my fault. <laughs> Even though I was kidnapped, and you were a bit miffed about that. Just you kidnapped it. me. Yeah, you're annoyed at that. Yeah, I mean, it, it's a fan, fanciful speech. I mean, who the hell has time to 
say something well, as bold and eloquent as that. It was like we said, they, they had time to pray and be quippy with each other. Probably more well likely <laughs> that he just walked and went, all right, pack it in, the <laughs> pair of you, I'm sick of you. But yeah, so the women effectively stopped. stopped the battle, get in the middle. So it worked, they stopped. Well, pretty much. Okay. So, although what you see on your screen is not Roman, it's French from 1799, it's called The Intervention of the Sabine Women by Jacques Louis David, we thought we'd probably spend a couple of minutes just having a look at this painting, because no doubt it will grace every PowerPoint on this subject right, across okay. the land. It, it's also got something for everyone, so we've it got... Absolutely, uh, I mean... Boobs and some, bumps. Yeah, <laughs> so some lovely bums, so and there's also some lovely boobs for the men as well. <laughs> yeah, I mean, if we take it apart, I mean, it sort of picks out the key iconography of the story. So if you look on the right-hand side, I'll put arrows to some of these things. <laughs> you, you've got Romulus standing there, fighting. He's got his shield with his wolf mum on. Oh, is that what that is? Yeah, that's his shield with his spear. I mean... Again, bear in mind this is a, a late Renaissance painting. There's a lot of fancy going on. I'm almost certain Romulus didn't fight naked. Yeah. It, I mean, it's pretty bad planning, isn't it? <laughs> Unless, I mean, to be fair to him, you know. It's hot in Italy. <laughs> he, it's hot in Italy, and the same can be said for his ass. I mean, <laughs> if he's, he's clearly spent a lot of time working on them, so obviously show them off. Show them off. The other guy on the other side has Tatius. got a nice, nice set of pins on him as well. He's well, got nice, nice legs. Set of pins. And yeah. also the, the most handily placed scabbard yes. in all of art Definitely. history. Definitely. But yeah, so again, you see the women in the middle. And What's the scabbard hanging off of? D don't ask that. Just <laughs> <laughs> don't ask that. I mean, Probably phrased. <laughs> if nothing else, we're getting all the gags out now before this turns up in the classroom and everyone's going to say, What's his scabbard hanging off? <laughs> It'll be a valid question still. Yeah. I mean, so you've got the two sides, you've got the women in the middle stretch out going, No, stop. I mean, if you look at the foreground, this is clearly the worst childcare ever. You know, bringing your kids to a battlefield so they can just play around yeah, on the just ground. Yeah, just you around on the floor. And then, I mean, clearly you've got this other woman here holding up the kid. She's seen The Lion King a bit too much. She's yeah. going full <laughs> on circle of life. Yeah, who's she holding that to? Because is that like, I thought they were thorns, but that's just a, is that a massive it's spears? That's a massive spears. Yeah, she's she's holding like, a baby up to them. She looks like she's using her baby as a human shield. She does. Yeah. Now, that's very wrong, but it's also very stupid because babies are not very big and they wouldn't cover up what she's using as a human shield. like you thought of using your son as a shield no, in the never. past. No, never. That's what yeah. I mean. I'd get a beefy man to stand in front of me, not a baby. Yeah, I think social services would have something to say about <laughs> these women, and now it seems Taylor. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I mean, again, in terms of the fancy, what you'll find is when you compare like Livy's descriptions and this pitch particularly um, of this early Rome, they've got these big walls, this idea that it's a massively fully developed city, whereas as we've said with the Romulus huts, it wouldn't have those massive walls with oh, circle oh. towers. I mean, we've said, and we like saying about circle towers, those uh, defensive walls look very kind of medieval, don't they, as well? Oh, like yeah. The turrets and things, they don't look Roman yeah. at all. I mean, we won't even ask what this woman in green's doing at the bottom. Yeah. Oh, God. Yeah, <laughs> you don't <laughs> see that one. I did not. So, yeah, so there's looks, all kinds like going Roman on. Maybe she get an <laughs> if, if she flashes, that it will be so hideous that that will Maybe. just stop the fighting. It also says Roma on his shield. It does. <laughs> yeah, I mean, the woman behind her in red's clearly not looking up for this is she i mean she she's the she's now regretting her actions but yeah it's likely this is going to be the most common representation you'll see of this event so there we go we've taken all the fun out of it <laughs> for you there it is the picture of the intervention of the sabine women did it work did them like leaping between these two <laughs> armies stop the them the fight yeah well i mean it certainly seems so livy says there was a sudden silence and stillness across the battlefield so basically the actions of the women and their kids can both sides and then the leaders romulus and tatius could negotiate a peace treaty they negotiate a treaty they didn't just continue lettering seven bells out so of each the, other. the men caused the problem 
I, I think, I, I think you'll, find, you'll, you'll find, according to what everyone said, the women are the problem. They've here. exacerbated the problem. <laughs> including the women who say it's their fault. And now, and now it's the women that have to um, like sort out their mess, basically. Well, yeah, sort out their mess, their own mess. <laughs> I'm going to move Joking. on before, you <laughs> before I have to do the Sabine women and get between you two. I mean, we know we would win. <laughs> yeah. The only thing that's stopping Sorry, that James, is, social, is social distancing. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so it seems like, yeah, they come to this negotiated peace. It's likely because the Sabines were much more powerful and much larger than the other tribes that had come and attacked them. And Rome, again, at this point, was not the great power it was destined to be. So it's like they've met their match, almost. Mm. Yeah, so the peace treaty effectively joined the two people, with Romulus and Tatius sharing power, but Rome was to be the capital of both states. Okay, so are they, so are they separate, or are they now one? Bit of both. So right, they're two okay. separate locations, but they're united through this common bond of this next generation of children. Right. But even so, really though, even for all that, Rome now has women, has babies, and they and they've expanded. And they've expanded, and they're like the capital of these these, yeah. these two cities. So everything did work out for them in the end. Yeah, in the end. Yeah, pretty much. So then, if we look back at the Sabine War, I mean. Again, one of the things we need to touch on is this idea of myth versus reality. Yeah. I mean, it's a lovely story. It's not. <laughs> it really <laughs> isn't, no. <laughs> it's a story with a lot of details. Got Disney aren't going to make a film about it anytime soon. Well, yeah, they would, but it'd be dreadful. <laughs> I'm trying um, to imagine how they would make they that they wouldn't. a family friendly version. <laughs> they wouldn't, because it's not a nice story. No, but it, it's a story, it's got lots of embellished details, the fact that Livy's recording various speeches on the battlefield, mm. that's obviously, we can say, pretty much that did not happen. Even the whole fanciful idea of women pressing themselves between two armies on a battlefield, you know, it's, it's a fight of fancy, if nothing else. Yeah. So, I mean, that is the there is this issue of myth and reality. Certainly, we know the Sabines became very important to the Romans, but whether this actually happened, there probably was some kind of battle. Yeah, a far some kind, of, kind of dominance. Yeah, but yeah, probably just came to a draw and just went to just pack it in and write yeah. a treaty. It was prob yeah, excuse me, it was probably a negotiation between the two without everything else, but yeah. maybe that just seemed a little bit boring. A bit boring, so they thought, how can we make this story more exciting? Yeah. I know, we'll stick some women in it, literally in the middle of the battle. And also, most civilizations and most countries, when they are expanding, will, like, rape and pillage, won't they? They will go and pinch women and, you know, do whatever they want with them. So, actually, it's kind of just following on that same yeah, it vein. follows a common theme. But it's a bit more... It's almost more sanitised. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the, the second thing that we should look at is this idea of the importance or the si significance of the Sabines to the rise of Rome. How significant and how important were they? I mean, the obvious one is that without the Sabines, there wouldn't be a second generation yeah. Romans. Well, they, need, no. they needed the women and they played the significant part of that. Yeah, and also, I mean, I know we've not got onto that point yet, but there are future rulers who are of Sabine Yeah, well, even now, heritage, though, I mean, so this shared rule between Romulus and Tatius shows that it's not necessarily a massively dominant relationship between Rome and the Sabines. They are sort of equals, maybe kind of diminished partners, but certainly there's a degree of sharing. Um, and again, this assimilation of them and the surrounding states. So what we see is this is a key way how Rome is able to expand its influence beyond its walls. And by assimilating the Sabines, effectively, Romulus has doubled any army mm. he'd care to go and fight someone with. Were, uh, you said like Romulus granted asylum for wave strays, exiles, yeah. etc. Were any of them from Sabine to begin with? Because if it, Sabine's now like a suburb of... Rome. Uh, yeah. They were so close together. <laughs> well, they weren't necessarily that close. Um, the Sabine capital was a town called Curis. It was a few 
it was a good few miles away. But yeah, little things like that. I mean, you'd assume some of these runaways and slaves would have been saved by, and then they'd be like, "Hang on a minute, didn't you nick my house? <laughs> didn't you nick my horse?" Like, no. Uh, and no, now I've nicked some... your daughter. Yeah, <laughs> you can't touch me, girl. I'm got asylum. So that kind of gets brushed over right, okay. for the greater good, I guess. Yeah. No, Anything I... to add, Taylor? No, no, not really. So there you have it, our little quick overview of the conflict between the Sabines and Rome. We hope this has been useful. Thank you for listening. Leave us a comment below. And until next time, bye. Bye. Bye.